Hello class, welcome to another lesson in biology. Today, we'll be looking at the female reproductive system in humans. I'm Miss Eugenia Chaminza. Let's begin. So by the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe the structure and function of the female mammalian reproductive system. So we have our key terms, ovary, oviduct, which is also known as the fallopian tube, uterus, which is also known as the womb, cervix, vagina, vulva, myometrium, endometrium, and perimetrium. So to begin with, we have an anterior view or the front view and the side view of the female reproductive system. Now, taking a look at these two systems, you notice that from the front, the reproductive system looks like a funnel where you have this region representing the top of the funnel where water can flow through and the bottom part where the water passes through to whichever container you are collecting into is. So it's a funnel-like structure. And then from the side, something to note is this person is facing forwards. So from the back here, you have the anus of the individual where ejection of undigested food occurs. The next hole that you meet from the anus is the vagina. And then the next one, which is usually the first from the front, is the urethra. Unlike that of males, the urethra and the vagina are representing two different tracts of two different systems. In males, they have a urogenital structure. I tackled this in my video on the male reproductive system. Do well to check it out. Now with females, we have a vagina which is responsible for the reproduction process. And then we have the urethra, which connects to the bladder for the passage of urine. So the parts of the female reproductive system we'll be looking at are put in this image. So let's zoom right into it, shall we? So from the outer portion of the female reproductive system, we have the vulva. Now the vulva is a collection of various structures which are represented in this image. We have the clitoris, which is usually stimulated to cause sexual arousal in the female during sexual intercourse. Then we have two lips present in the female. We have the bigger outer lip, which is the labia majora. And then we have the inner lips, which is the labia minora. These two lips are responsible for covering and protecting the internal structure of the female reproductive system. In what we have the hole, which is the vaginal opening. So the function of the vulva is it acts as the gate for the uterus or womb and provides protection by opening and closing of the lips. It also plays a role in sexual arousal and stimulation, as we already mentioned with the clitoris, when it is stimulated during sexual intercourse. And it also facilitates sex. Mostly there are secretions which are produced by the vulva. There are some glands which produce some secretions which allow for lubrication of the various parts of the vulva. And in so doing, it helps to lubricate for facilitation of sex and also for cushioning, which is the mons pubis. The mons pubis is representing the layer of skin which covers the top of the vulva. During puberty, there is growth of hair on the mons pubis. Moving on, we have the vagina. Now the vagina is a canal or an opening. It's muscular in nature, so it has the ability to stretch. Mostly it stretches during childbirth to facilitate the pushing out of the baby during childbirth. It's a muscular canal that extends from the outside of the female genital area, that is from the vulva, to the neck of the uterus, which is the cervix. So the essence of this canal is to first off receive the penis and sperms during sexual intercourse. It is also the passageway for blood and mucosal tissue from the uterus during menstruation. So usually during ovulation, there is a thickening of the uterine lining. Menstruation will lead to the release of that thickened lining. And it comes accompanied with the loss of blood, which passes through the vagina out of the body. And that is the canal which is responsible for that. It is also responsible for the passageway of the baby during childbirth. The next up here is the cervix. Now, the cervix is said to be a part of the uterus. It is the connection between the uterus and the vagina. It plays a major role, especially during childbirth. 
a dilate to allow for the baby to pass through. So usually when a pregnant woman is in labor, you hear two centimeters dilated, up to 10 centimeters dilated. That is referring to the opening of the cervix. That is the dilation. It is opening up, extended size. So it is a passage for fluids to flow inside. So the fluid that will flow inside or into the cervix will mostly be semen, which has sperms in it. That is during sexual intercourse. And outside should be any other fluid which is produced from the female reproductive system, be it the egg cell which has been released, or menstrual blood, or any discharge which has been released from the female reproductive system out of the uterus. It also plays a major role in menstrual cycle, pregnancy, and childbirth. So moving from the cervix upwards is the uterus. The uterus plays a role in cushioning and holding the baby in place as it grows. So this is the part that houses the baby throughout its development from the blastocyst right up until it is pushed out. The placenta forms and attaches to the uterine walls but prior to that there is implantation in the uterus. So prior to the placenta being formed the implantation occurred inside the uterus. So the uterus it is a hollow pear-shaped muscular organ located between the bladder and the rectum. The walls of the uterus has three layers. So the three layers are referring to the very inner wall, which is the endometrium, the middle layer, which is the myometrium, and the outer layer, which is the perimetrium. The outer layer usually attaches to other parts of the pelvis. So that is the perimetrium, the outer layer. It is also the site for implantation. So this is the various parts I was mentioning of the uterine lining. So we have the endometrium, the myometrium, and the perimetrium. So the functions of the uterus. The first is it receives a fertilized egg and protects the fetus during its growth. It also contracts to push the baby out during delivery. And its lining is thickened during ovulation and shed during menstruation. Next, we have fallopian tubes. The fallopian tubes connect the uterus to the ovaries. Now, the fallopian tube is also referred to as the oviduct. A duct is a tube, as we've seen from the sperm duct. It was a tube for the sperm. Oviduct is the tube for the ova, that is the eggs. Now, the fallopian tube is usually where fertilization occurs. The egg cell, which is released from the ovary, gets to into the fallopian tube and is met by the sperm cell. A successful sperm cell will fertilize the egg cell and it will form a zygote which will implant in the uterus. So the function of the fallopian tube, we have the fact that it is responsible for the transport of eggs from the ovary to the uterus for fertilization and growth of an embryo. The next is the ovary, the production of ova. These are a pair of glands. So you notice that there's one here, one at the other side. The fallopian tube is also a pair where one goes to the left, one goes to the right. These are a pair of glands connected to the uterus by specific ligament, that is tough tissue sheets. And they are responsible for producing eggs and secreting hormones, that is estrogen and progesterone. We'll look at the function of hormones in another topic do stay tuned. So to summarize, so the structure of the female reproductive system is such that the eggs are released by the ovaries into the fallopian tube, which is also known as the oviduct. Upon fertilization of these eggs by sperm cell, this fertilized egg cell moves through the fallopian tube and implants in the uterus, which is also known as the womb. This implantation takes place and growth occurs and placenta is also formed in the uterus. It attaches to the uterus. After successful development in the womb of the female, there is a dilation of the cervix to allow for the baby to be pushed out during labor. Results in the release into the vagina, which is a canal, which leads to the baby moving out of the body of the individual. I hope this class has been helpful and insightful for you. Please do well to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can leave your questions in the comment section below. Thank you for your time.